Hello, this is Compound Interest Stock Guy, and today we're going to be talking about Village Farms and Citron Research Report. So stay tuned. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and and uh, hit the bell for notifications so you're updated when I upload a new video. I also want to disclose I'm not a financial advisor. This is just for entertainment information purposes. Do not buy or sell a stock based on anything I chat about in this video. Buy or sell after you do your research and your due diligence and you like the investment you're pursuing. So today was kind of wild. Uh, Citron, they they have a report on them uh, saying that the SEC should... should uh, investigate village farms and the price target of one dollar so uh before we get into this i just want to do a a brief summary on what i believe village farms is they are a vegetable grower they've been around for a long time i've eaten hundreds of their tomatoes they make the best tomatoes i've ever had in my life uh they're from ladner bc and they have about 3 million square feet of greenhouses that they're presently converting. Right now, I think they, they're around 1 million in, in greenhouses in square feet. And then they also have a JV with this Jennings group in USA to grow hemp, to be a big hemp grower. They also uh, grow vegetables in Texas and uh, yeah, they've been around for a long time. They they do around 140 million in annual revenues as a vegetable grower, but they've uh, joined with Emerald Health and now they're uh, doing cannabis and they're selling it in uh, Vivo's online store and as well as in the in all the in the provinces that Emerald has a deal with. So they have a 50-50% deal with Emerald Health. And uh, yeah, I mean, they have a very tight float. So when you see that their price is $20 or $18, whatever the case in, in Canadian funds, they have a really uh, tight float. They have about 47 million shares out and Canopy Growth has around 300 and Aurora has close to 1.1 billion. So just think about that. That's about uh, 20, that's over 20 to 25 times as uh, less shares than Aurora has. So when you're looking at the, at the market cap, it's, it's a lot different than Aurora because they don't have that many shares out. So they're, they're a different company. They change their vegetables uh, business and now they're turning to cannabis because the profits are better so yeah let's get into this so they saying that they're a failed tomato farmer on the brink of bankruptcy and the joint venture and there's all these red flags and then they're saying that can trust the people should invest into operators such as can trust for the same amount of money and they're talking about all these promotional press releases and they're calling uh the this guy after dylan an infamous penny stock promoter from uh emerald health yeah so they're saying that he, they did all these stock promotion And they're saying he's he's a board member at Vitali Biopharma, which the SEC halted only five months ago, citing potential stock ma manipulation. So, and then they're talking about the current share price. And then Emerald Health had a JV with Abatis Biosuticals, and look how that turned out. They're talking about the share price going from here and all the way down. So they're saying, oh, they're just pumping and dumping it. And then uh, they're talking about that Emerald had a deal with Namaste. They're just, he's just using just stupid articles. I, I don't really think that 
as much weight as far as the Abadis Biosuticals. They they bought uh, an asset for lab testing in Abbotsford to test cannabis, and they bought it from Abadis. That's all. Uh, And then they're talking about a blockchain change JV, Emerald Health, but Emerald Health, they're, I mean, they're connected with Village Farms, but he should be just focusing on Village Farms if he's trying to, but he's, he's trying to go at Emerald at the same time. So he's putting them in the crosshairs. And they're saying all these people that left the company And they're saying that they use the same stock promoters as IGC and the Master Day. And he's saying that he took down 80% from his peak. So he's saying that he's the reason why the Master Day is, is down from about $4 to around $0.60. Cents. That's all his doing. <laughs> and... Uh, And then, it's, and then he's just talking about that this is minimal hemp experience and is nothing more than a small time farmer. Their their Jennings group, but in reality, hemp is be, is new to any company because it's been illegal. So I mean, obviously they're not going to have lots of hemp experience. That doesn't mean that they can't grow hemp. So, I don't know, it's just a funny, plus the village farms have extremely good, uh, good ex knowledge about growing vegetables, so I don't see them having a problem growing hemp outdoors. And then he's talking about management was actively selling stock into these bot deals which is basically some of these CEOs they'll sell their shares as soon as uh, there's a PP so then they can use that money to to put it into uh, the private placement so then they can get some warrants as well so that's what these these guys do I mean I I, I can't confirm all this that it's all it's all good, but it doesn't really worry me too much. And then they're saying Village Farms only has less than 12 million of cash. And that I think that's a lie. I didn't look at the, the core lease, but they just raised another 20 million. So they got 32 million. So <laughs> that's what these guys, these shorters do. They'll They'll just use any type of argument to try to get their point across, but and then they say once investors look past the the stock promotions, the stock will go back to one dollar if it doesn't get halted before that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, I don't know, it's just interesting. And there's all this cautious investing to all. And it's just he's it's saying in fine letters it's just his his opinion, but at the same time he's he's blatantly accusing them of fraud. So <laughs> I don't know, it's a pretty hard line. Anyways, today it it uh, went down. It opened at seventeen dollars and five cents, and then it dropped to thirteen dollars in Canadian and then it went up to to close at fifteen dollars and eighteen cents. So I saw that dip like when you see that wick like this and the RSI is down to close to thirty or under that signals to me a good buying opportunity. I have so I decided to get a call option for eleven dollar US strike price till 
uh, mid-May, I believe, and I paid a dollar twenty-five for it when people were panic selling. So, I mean, it can make me a lot of money if if those farms goes up to say seventeen U.S. dollars or twenty dollars. So, it's pretty much the RSI is at around thirty-five. This was when it was overbought, and now so. There's no way to tell that it's going to go up tomorrow. It could go down. But my thinking is it'll go to maybe around 16, 17, and then come back down to around 14, 13 or so. And then and then it'll get ready to, to get go higher probably. But I'm going to have to look at the charts later. But yeah, that's pretty much my take on it. It's uh, if I own the stock I, and I didn't sell at the beginning of the day, I probably wouldn't be selling for sure. Unless you're paranoid, maybe sell 10% of your shares, but I really wouldn't worry. I think it should be okay in the long term because this company has a lot of greenhouse growing capability and they have a vegetable growing business as well. And they're going to grow hemp and they, they could potentially turn all their, their millions of square feet in the USA if it goes federal legal because they're on the Na uh, NASDAQ, I believe. They could turn that into production square f uh, in um, if they retrofit it and then they could be a huge greenhouse grower for cannabis in the US. So as well as being a big hemp grower. So they have a lot of square feet potential to be a really big dominant player in cannabis. Uh, I own this stock back when it was a dollar ninety one, <laughs> and I sold it at a dollar ninety two. And uh, yeah, I I knew they had a lot of square feet, and they had a price to book of it was like zero point seven five back then. And now their their price books a lot higher, but their potential to make a lot of revenues. It could be very high so they're sitting at pro right now about about like 700 million Canadian and then about 500 million USD so for their and they have the potential to grow a hundred thousand kilograms to up to like 300,000 kilograms just in Canada and then in USA they could grow another 100,000 to 200,000 kilograms as well as grow 100,000 to 300,000 kilograms of hemp. So if you add that all up on top of the fact that they grow tomatoes and they have partners and they're on the NASDAQ, they won't have a problem raising funds to move their business forward that I think they're they're pretty safe. But of course, you can always panic about it and yeah anyways that's pretty much my summary and with the chart and uh, my summary of the Citron research report and my thoughts on the village farm so I hope you like this uh, content and give me a thumbs up and subscribe for future content information and until next time peace